did I seriously just pay $200 for a shoe that doesn't even have an insole in it? Probably got to be because of that funny name that I can't pronounce. K. Sherak. Sherak? Sherak. 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 After a lot of Google sessions on how to pronounce Killian Jarnett's new normal Sherek, which I still not quite 100% sure I'm pronouncing it right, I thought to myself, if the shoe is good enough for the GOAT to train in and good enough for him to race in the same shoe at Hard Rock and at UTMB, not the same model, the same shoe, then it's got to be good for us mere mortals, right? It's definitely one of the most unique shoes I've ever ran in, but also it's got some great new designs that I think are really, really solid. But do these difference in the shoe designs make this $200 shoe really worth running in? I've taken it through long trail runs, short trail runs, a lot of different speeds mixed in there. And here's what I have to say. It's good enough for Killian. This bad boy's good enough for me. And let me explain to you why I think this shoe has some unique designs that actually could change the way trail shoes are made potentially forever. And why? I think it is worth 200 bucks. First, let's talk about the good. And by the good, I'm going to start with the minimal design for maximum benefit. When I took this shoe out of the box for the very first time, I was out in Palm Springs getting a trail run in and I said out loud, I just paid $200 for a shoe that doesn't have an insole. And so obviously quickly picked up my phone, typed into the Google machine about why there's no insole in here. And it's actually a design feature. So when Killian was making this shoe, one of the things that they did with this is they removed the insole. And so when looking at this and trying to get an understanding of why, that insole is what moves and kind of has a little bit of give in it in the shoe. And so their thought was if you remove it, you have less friction, less rubbing, therefore reducing the amount of blisters and increasing the durability of the shoe because you don't have that type of movement in there. Now, I can't talk to the durability in it because I haven't put the claimed 500 plus miles of racing in them or over 900 miles of training in, but what I can talk to is the comfort of not having an insole in this shoe. The snugness is unlike any other shoe. The comfort on my foot is unlike any other shoe. And it's not like it's the most plush, it's not like it's the most forgiving shoe that I've ever ran in out on the trails, but with the ever-changing terrains of the trails, the rocks, the couple different types of trails that I've ran on, it really has a unique feel underfoot and it almost like it's more part of your foot than any other trail shoe. This is not to knock other trail shoes because I do have some love for those, but it is a unique design feature that I do believe once other brands find out, this is the shoe in the brand that's gonna be the one that said, we started the no insole in the trail shoe first. And it's a really, really solid benefit. Next in the comfort world and also in the durability is the upper. Killian talks about wanting to make a durable shoe and that he thinks the shoe game's a little bit broken in the fact of how many shoes pro runners and amateur runners go through and so to the touch and when you feel this upper, this thing feels like it's got thousands of miles in it. It is strong, it is high quality, it feels durable, but it's also extremely comfortable. There's some nice padding around the collar. The tongue is extremely high quality material, but also lays nicely on top of your foot. An area where I'm seeing a lot of running shoes skip out on high quality is in the laces. These are the highest quality laces that I've seen in probably years. And if you remember my review on the Speedgoat 5, I said the number one spot where I felt that Hoka skipped out on was the laces. And so I've actually changed out the laces to the previous model. But here, the lockdown on this shoe has stayed so tight because of these high quality laces, I haven't had to relace them on any of my runs. So that upper, high quality, high comfort. You can see why this thing costs $200 is because that upper is gonna last a really, really long time. Now let's talk about the midsole and how that ride feels. It's not the softest of midsoles, but also it's a trail shoe. It's not supposed to be the softest of midsoles, but it's, it's soft enough. It's like the perfect amount on a trail shoe. If you're looking at different types of road shoes and how this transitions over, 
Think the brand new Adidas SL, which is a shoe I absolutely love. Think the Asics Nimbus Light. Not your softest of shoes, but also not your firmest of shoes. It's like that perfect amount. And also it's got the light Vibram outsole, which is great for tacky. I've done it on super dry terrain and I've also ran in this in some fairly muddy terrain and it's worked out absolutely perfect. But from a comfortability on that midsole and outsole, it's exactly what you need out of a trail shoe. And now let's talk about durability. Now let's talk about durability. Okay, so Killian's 5'7", 130 pounds. I'm 6'1", 165 pounds. So I understand I'm gonna wear out a shoe probably faster than Killian and all these really light, lean, ultra marathon runners. But the fact that the greatest of all time on trails is racing in the same shoe of upwards of 500 miles winning both UTMB and Hard Rock in the same pair of shoes, as well as training in a pair at over 1,500 kilometers, that says something. And that says something that he knows he can get the most performance out of the shoe for that long. And if the trail runners at the highest level have these types of claims and are using this shoe for that long, that just tells me that there's genuineness to the amount of durability in the shoe. Now it is yet to be determined whether or not this shoe can get that amount on somebody who has my build, a little bit taller, a little bit heavier than these pro ultra marathon runners, but the claims are there. And I'm excited to see how far us mere mortals can take this shoe because durability in shoes is something that's gotta improve. And it sounds like they've really built this thing for the long haul. And last, and you know, arguably not that important, but we all have some vanity. The shoe just looks sexy. I was really hesitant to get an all white shoe. Uh, I actually went to go get the white sole and the black shoe, but it was sold out in my size. So I purchased the all white a little bit reluctantly. And I get more comments on this shoe probably than any other shoe that I get. So the vanity of the shoe, it's a really darn good looking shoe. Got to put that in the good category. Obviously, the bad, it's the price. At almost $200, it's a really tough pill to swallow. And I haven't gotten the claims of the durability that, they, that they're saying of this 500 racing miles, the nearly 900 of training miles. So right now, yeah, 200 is a challenge. I, I gotta say, it, even though you're getting the higher build quality, it's a lot of money. My verdict. I. I genuinely believe this is worth that tough pill of the $200 to swallow. It feels very unique on the foot with that no insole. That upper is extremely high quality. The lockdown is great with the trail shoe. And I think this bad boy is really going to last a long time. If one of their top marketing things that they're putting out there is a durability shoe, I have a really hard time believing, even though I'm several inches taller than Killian and about 40 pounds heavier than him. I still think I'm gonna get a solid amount of miles out of this shoe.